I was born in 1968. And for the first nine years of my life, I lived in an all-white neighborhood to 1977. I remember writing that on my writing that on my piece of paper, 1977. But I was in the third grade. I don't know if the numbers match up or not, but that's the memory I recollect. I definitely remember the third grade because I had a crush on my teacher, Miss Cole. Yep. And fourth grade, I had a crush on Miss Smith at school 73, but. That's just about what I'm really about to get to. Uh, uh, yeah. The first, well, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade were all white schools. I was the only black person in those schools. Now, the thing is, is in those schools, in those years, and in those neighborhoods, I was definitely black. Now. Of course, once again, being raised in an all-white neighborhood, I spoke very proper English or white talk. That's all I knew and heard. So, but I don't know if I, I sounded white to them. I guess I don't know. Maybe I had a black accent because of my parents or something. I don't know. But I don't know. But anyway, all-white school. I knew I was black. I remember second grade, this little girl coming over to me talking about, David Brooks don't like you because you're black. So do me a favor, go tell David Brooks I don't like him either because he's white. Me and Dave became somewhat kind of friends, you know, offish friends, but, you know, I definitely remember that. I remember um, the differences being an all-white school. I never really had to fight. Most people are already scared of me. We used to play a racer tag. I had an afro then, J5. I was Michael Jackson, man. You know what I'm saying? So I put the racer in my afro, run around, get all the kids. So we went candy. You know, I remember a flash card test where if you learned your multiplications the fastest, you could spit them out. You go up down this road, you win this big ass candy bar. I remember I lost it like four four times in a row, and I was like, man, I'm going to get that damn candy bar. I went to the crib and studied the shit out of my multiplications, and I beat all of them and got my candy bar, boy. I remember track and field was a big thing because I was there. I was black. I remember this one dude in the other third grade. He was Indian, so, he, you know, they had somebody to, like, athletically challenge me. Thought that was nice. He beat me in something, but I beat him in everything else. So, you know, that was all good, you know. But I remember, like, you know, start smoking cigarettes about around eight, you know, hanging with them little white dudes. I remember going over to this guy named Guy's house, and his dad and them left scotch. We drinking scotch and Coke, you know what I'm saying, smoking Marlboros, <laughs> listening to Kiss, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I didn't know the difference. I had never known the difference. Like, in the apartments we lived in had a uh, clubhouse where you had foosball tables, pool tables, cigarette machines. Then back there was the pool, you know. Then there was a lake right there, you know. So, like, you know, kids didn't just run around. Like, you went to the playground, but you went over in each other's houses and most of them I can remember, their parents were never there, or we never went over there when their parents were there. It was always somebody's house to go over when somebody's parents was gone. I remember the schools, like, lit up. They were lit up. Um, you always had dessert, Frosties or whatever. You could just bring another dollar and get yourself a Frosty. I remember being spaced out. Like I said, it lit up. I remember even, we always had recess. And I remember one time they pulled me from recess. Like, it was like, you can't go to recess anymore until you catch up on your reading. And I had to go in the room with this lady, and she would do her finger like this, go across the words, and I had to keep up pace. Now, when I was able to keep up pace on a regular pace, then I was allowed to go back to recess. Now, to me, that was annoying, but I didn't understand what was really going on, like, because I'm living in the moment. I, 
I had no idea what was really going on. What I was actually learning, what I was actually experiencing, I had no idea. Third grade ends. Now I find out that I'm about to leave the third grade. My mother tells me this is the last day. And I, I realized that I am no longer going to have Miss Cole as my teacher. And I remember sitting there saying, damn, I wish I would have failed. My heart was broke because I was going to have to leave Miss Cole. This was a huge turning point in my life. Never could have guessed that this was going to be the huge turning point in my life. A couple of months later, I'm at the house. My father comes down, talks to me, pulls me to the side. I still remember this serious conversation because, hell, we don't really have a lot of them. You know, usually I just stay in my room and watch TV, play with my um, Star Wars cards and you know, my football, baseball, basketball cards and stuff like that. You know, shit and study, watch TV. I can't go outside after dark and I can't go outside until I do my homework. And most of the time, by the time you finish your homework, it's pretty dark. So I just stay in my room and watch TV. So when dad comes and sets me down and wants to talk to me, I know it's something serious. So he says, you know, um, man, I'm going to let you know it's not you, blah, 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 some, some, some. I'm still like, what? You know, he's like, but uh, me and your mother, I don't think we're working out. I think we're going to get a divorce or something like that. I'm like, what? Man, I'm not really knowing what this shit means. Like, I don't really know what you're saying for real. Like, I know it's deep. Then I'm like, I know I'm kind of messed up. I'm like, all right, well, shit, okay, let's see what happens. So, like any kid, the next day I wake up, everything look kind of okay. It looks the same, refrigerated. Come home, y'all not there, right? So, you know, refrigerator looked the same. All right, we steal something. All right, cool. Uh, shit, damn. So, you know, I know there's a lot of tension around the house. Uh, I remember something, I did something. I cut the TV on, I did something, and he hollered at me. Like, that hurt my heart. That hurt my heart. I remember mean, I mean, just bawling. Like, I remember bawling. And a little later, I mean, it had to be like maybe a week later, I remember him asking me, like, where I want to stay. Do I want to stay with him or something like that, or do I want to stay with Granny? Hmm. I'm like, well, I really don't know Granny that well. I, mean, I know we go over there sometimes, and, you know, she always has something baked, or, you know, or, something to eat. I remember it was fun going over there. I remember saying a lot of times I didn't want to leave her alone over there because I kept saying, she's by herself. Somebody needs to be with her. And I remember asking Daddy, you know, like, Dad, can I stay with her for a little while? Like, I don't want her to be by herself. Now, I, I remember that because I remember just leaving, like, who's going to be there with her? And, well, so anyway, at 8, 9, 8, 9, he asked me, you know, you want to... I said, well, okay, I want to... I guess I think I was over Granny's house. I said, I think I want to stay with Granny. So next thing I know is, like, now I'm over Granny's house. But I'm not really understanding. Like, I'm here. I don't, I don't have a room. I don't have a TV. I'm not about to go to my school. I'm not understanding. You know, we on summer. I'm like, it's because school, everything goes back to normal. No. Now I'm going to school 73. I live on 28th and Forest Manor, Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm a long way from where I was. I still didn't understand 